How do you know what fonts to choose for your UI projects? Let's talk about that. Hey everyone, it's Elizabeth from DesignerUp, helping you level up your product design skills. You may have heard a lot about typography and fonts, but you might be surprised at a few considerations that you might not be thinking about. This video is for all of you UI designers and web designers that are dealing with designing web pages and interfaces for digital screens. It might seem like choosing a font is a quick minor step in your design process, but with so many options, it can make it really hard to narrow it down and decide what's right. But if you follow this funnel process, it will help you filter down your options and guide you to the perfect font every time. The first step of the funnel is choosing a place to find your fonts. Based on price and offerings, there are many different places to get fonts. These are called foundries or font libraries. Two of the most popular resources are, you guessed it, Google Fonts and Adobe Fonts. Google and Adobe are the de facto choices because the fonts here are open source, they are optimized for fast loading times, and they are hosted. The next step of the funnel is product branding and audience. This part starts with research. If you haven't already done so in your UX process, it's important to understand the taste and aesthetics that are most appealing to the users or customers that will be interacting with your website or user interfaces. It's also a good idea to take a look at the fonts your competitors are using. Do you want to establish yourself as a clear part of a certain industry, or do you want to stand out and shake things up? Knowing what your users will resonate with, along with the unique differentiators you want to highlight on your product, is the first step to aligning your product, audience, and brand through your font choice. The next step of the funnel is font scalability. Fonts are both utility and art. For maximum utility, readability is the most important thing. Fonts should be readable regardless of the size. Pay particular attention to smaller sizes. Think about context. How does this look on phones versus desktop screens? Check it out on dark mode and light mode. Try applying a typographic scale to test this. Check out my link in the card above to a video that I've done on this. The next step of the funnel is loading time. So you found the most beautiful font that perfectly reflects your vision for the brand. Not so fast. Something we rarely consider as designers when we're creating our static mockups is website loading time. But the performance cost of the fonts we choose can have a huge impact on both user experience and business goals. The Doherty threshold is a UX law that says we should provide system feedback within 400 milliseconds in order to keep users' attention and increase productivity. Web developers must take the fonts we've used in our designs and import and implement the font files to be rendered in the browsers. And depending on the size of that file increases the load time of our pages. Another way to help reduce font loading time on your site is to only download the font weights that you need. Each font weight that's included adds additional size. So sticking to maybe the three or four major hierarchies that are most important for your design is a good rule of thumb. If you think there might be an issue with slow load times based on the fonts you've chosen, communicate that to your developer so that they can make the necessary provisions. Moving on to the next stage of the funnel, this is all about font format, style, family, and combining fonts. Another consideration is that not all font formats or font files are supported on browsers, so make sure that your font is web safe. A font is only web safe if it has all of the following file types, TTF, OTF, SVG, and WOFF. This will ensure that your fonts will render across all of the most common browsers. Font style. Based on your user research and competitive analysis from earlier, you'll wanna match your font's personality to your brand's personality. You can usually get a sense of a font's personality by looking more closely at the letter forms. Is it a serif, a more serious style? Thick sans serif, more of a text style? Handwritten for a more organic human look? Serif versus sans serif and all of the little differences of the letter forms in between? Paying attention to those can help you find a personality for your font that matches the personality of your brand and your audience. Font family. 
Choosing a font that comes from a large family is a great idea. It gives you more sizes and style options to play with within the same family so that things automatically match and look good together. Check out my other video on the difference between fonts, font families, and typography in the card above. If you do need to combine more than one font, then the rule is not too close and not too far in terms of style. If you must combine them, it's important to understand what pairs well together and what doesn't. While this is quite subjective, there are some combinations that are just more dissonant than others. So don't combine fonts that are too similar but only slightly different. This creates visual conflict. Instead, use something with balanced contrast between the letter forms. Of course, you don't want to choose fonts with no relationship either. To really understand the relationship between similarity and contrast of fonts and letter forms would require an analysis of the attributes of those letter forms. So while that's a topic for another video, I do have a video with some amazing tools that help do the pairing work for you. The next stage of the funnel is to assign distinct roles to the fonts. That means that if you're using this particular font in this weight and you want it to be all caps, make sure that that's clear and that you always use that in the same way every time for consistency. The same thing for choosing one of those fonts for your headers or for your body. You can create a style tile, a UI kit, or a full-on design system to help you greatly with this. I have another video on how you can learn and steal from some of the greatest design systems, so check that out as well. And the final step of the funnel. Take everything that we've talked about in this video and throw it out the window. Forget all of your fonts because now it's time to choose a system fallback font. Ever notice there is a string of fonts defined in the code other than the ones you chose for your designs? Well, that's because browsers, as clever as they are, still need a backup plan. That means that if for some reason, if your font doesn't render properly in the browser, it will default to the user's system font instead. So this one last step is to make sure that your type looks good with one of the defaults on your user's system and to let your developer know what your fallback font choice is. In the full article to this video, I have lots of links and recommendations and deeper dives about about this stuff, there are more great resources in our newsletter. So make sure to sign up for that at designerup.co. We dive a lot deeper into typography treatment and visual hierarchy in our master course. So if you're interested in that, come check it out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.